Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Adorkable Rachel and it's time once again for another episode of Rachel Review, so let's just hop into it. Your Name, aka Kimi no Nawa, is the new 2016 anime film that has been sweeping headlines ever since it was released last summer. It's the story of a young teenage girl named Mitsuha who lives in rural Japan who one day wakes up and realizes that she has switched bodies with a teenage boy named Taki who lives in Tokyo. So over time they learn to adapt to the weird situation, but the strange thing is they also tend to switch back and forth while they're sleeping sometimes, and in the process their memories when they're in the other person's body becomes very spotty, almost like they're experiencing a dream. And partially because of this, it becomes very hard for them to track each other down. So it's kind of like the Freaky Friday of anime films, but with a much more mysterious and engaging plot. The movie was released last year in America, actually here in Los Angeles, for literally one week because that's all it would take for it to be nominated for an Academy Award. They were hoping that it would at least get nominated for Best Animated Feature, but unfortunately it did not get nominated for anything, and I really do think that that's a crying shame because I am right up there with the critics and the audiences that have been praising this film because I think it is phenomenal. I got invited to the English premiere last week and it was being held at the infamous Yamashiro Japanese restaurant. Actually, very coincidentally, it is my personal favorite restaurant, so you can imagine how ecstatic I was when I found out that they would be premiering it at this restaurant. And just about everyone in attendance was either a huge anime fan or they were more than likely somebody from the voiceover industry or just the industry in general, so this was definitely the best kind of audience to watch this with. They even had a little after party afterwards where we got free sushi and we got a bunch of little goodie bags. The event was in part sponsored by Pocky, but it was also sponsored by TYKU Sake. So hey, I got free sake! I got the cucumber brand and actually it is quite delicious. I know, I promise this is not a sponsored video or anything. I'm just telling you that it is really cool that they did in fact give us free sake at an anime event. Wow, that's really good. So once we sat down and watched the movie, it was an insanely pleasant and sentimental experience. And you know what? I don't use those words lightly. It has a good dose of comedy and a good dose of emotional complexity, and it's all played out insanely well by its two main leads who learn about the other person by living their lives and learning about how to be that person. And we, the audience, pretty much go along with that whole entire journey. And it's interesting because while you're experiencing this movie, you're kind of tricked into thinking that this could be a really predictable but cute and enjoyable story. At first, Mitsuha and Taki think that this is all a dream, but then they realize the switching is real, and then they find ways to communicate with each other when they're in the other person's body. And because of this, a sort of romance starts to develop between the two because of this insanely unique way that they have to learn about each other. So like I said, you think that this is going to be a cute little predictable romance, but then about halfway through the movie, things kind of take an exciting turn. Without giving too much away, it just gets really, really complex. And I mean like inception level of complex. And I really can't say much more without going into spoiler territory, but I can promise you that it does take a very big emotional turn on your experience with this film. And it's not overblown or cheesy either. It's actually done in a very effective and heartfelt way. Since we're dealing with a boy and a girl in different locations, we actually start to notice that there's a bit of a balance between different dynamics and perceptions and locations. The busy city life versus the small town country life. Tradition versus technology. Youth culture versus adulthood. All these different elements that contrast each other that are one and the same but also very different. And I think that's one of the big themes of the movie, especially since throughout the story they talk about how people and things are connected but they're also disconnected. Something else to be admired about this movie is just the detail to the setting and the atmosphere. From what I understand, they actually took real locations in Tokyo and rural Japan and then they drew over them and put that into the film. To the point I think where they were actually tracing images and if that's true that would certainly explain the realism of the atmosphere. And I know it's animated and hand drawn but there's something about this movie that just makes it feel real. I've been to Japan and when I was watching this film, I felt like I was right back there. Just the way that everything's drawn has so much detail put into them from the landscapes to the architecture to the rooms that just have stuff in them. I mean, it's it's just really hard to explain, but you literally feel like it's all right there. Which when you think about it also kind of adds to the consciousness of the characters being transported to different locations. What I personally felt was really interesting about this film is that while it is an anime movie, it really could have worked as an anime series 
series as well. The plot just feels like it could have worked as a legit anime series, and also the characters were drawn and animated like they were on a TV show. You don't normally see characters look like this in anime movies that are meant to stand on their own. The movie even starts with an intro that feels like an anime opening. So I can't help but wonder on my end if director Makoto Shinkai was actually thinking about this being an anime series before he turned it into a movie. Or maybe he just wanted it to feel like an anime series so that everyone could feel a little closer to it. Or maybe that's just his style. Honestly, I don't know because I haven't seen any of his other films. That was just kind of what I got out of it when I watched this movie. Also, the two main dub voice actors for this were in attendance at the premiere, and at one point they got on the mic and they told us that when they were recording the roles, they actually directed each other. And you know what? There is just something really beautiful and romantic about that. Basically, they were each helping each other to play the roles that they themselves played. I myself have not seen the Japanese version or seen the exact translation, so I can't really compare or contrast the two, but from what I saw, the dub was very good and the dialogue felt natural and it didn't feel too forced. You know, it's interesting, I feel like one of the reasons that we Americans embrace anime so much these days is because, in small part, I think it might have to do with the fact that we're kind of deprived from 2D animated films. I mean, think about it, everything in the theaters these days is basically 3D animation. Don't get me wrong, I mean, 3D animation's beautiful and there is some 2D stuff that we see on television, but for the most part, I just feel like this whole hand-drawn flowing animation, we don't really see that much anymore. And I just feel like when it comes to animation like this, we're kind of forgetting just how powerful it can be in its visual storytelling. Obviously, I can't really prove any of that, but I guess what I'm saying is watching this movie with a big audience that was so ecstatic to see this kind of animation. It was it was a really, really refreshing experience. And with that said, I really do hope that it does get the attention that it deserves because it really is just a mind-blowing movie. So guess what? It's actually going to be released in American theaters on April 7th, and if you get the chance, I highly recommend that you check it out. Especially if you like good storytelling, or if you're a fan of anime, or if you're a big fan of complex ideas of space and time. And if you can see it in the theaters, I highly recommend it because it is just going to be so much more emotionally gripping if you're able to feel like you're right there in the movie. And let's face it, that's much more effective when you see it in a big screen theater. So those are my thoughts on the highly acclaimed Your Named aka Kimi no Noa film. So now I want to know, did you guys get a chance to see it? Are you gonna plan to see it? Did you notice any other underlying themes or messages in the film? And do you think that it's deserving of the praise that it's been getting and does it deserve to be released in more theaters? Well, go ahead and leave your comments below. Be sure to like and share. And if you're new and like what you saw here, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And also be sure to hit the little bell button down there to get notified when new stuff comes out because I I make new videos every week! Bye, Durga Buddies! I'll see you soon! Mm.